So what is estimate IR delay in RumiQ Wizard? That's what Jay asked in our class tonight, and so I wanted to see if I could give a little bit more clear answer in this video. So when you take a measurement in RumiQ Wizard, this is one of the first things you might see. Um, and when you take the measurement, imagine that typically, you, if you're starting from the very beginning, then this will just be zero, right? You take the measurement, and so there's two things I want to show you in this window. The first one is pattern matching, right? So we need to start just recognizing these patterns in the same way that we read words in a sentence. You look at something like this and you realize, oh, I haven't done estimate IR delay yet. I probably need to do that if I want to be able to read this phase graph. Now, you don't have to do this. You could do all your work without adjusting, uh, without estimate IR delay, without adjusting the T0 position, the timing zero reference. Um, but I can really only read this part of the graph here. I can't really read any of this here, right? So estimate our delay, adjusting this T0 position is really only for us humans to help us be able to read the graph. It doesn't change the data of the measurement, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that it's interesting that on a logarithmic display, while this slope of this phase trace here seems to get less and less steep, as we move this way, right? So um, these lines, well, you can see the lines are getting less and less deep. If I switch to a linear graph here, then we can see that now the lines look like they're all the same slope. So interesting to see that on a linear display, we can see that this is um, not frequency dependent delay, but pure, um, electronic delay plus, you know, time of flight through the air. Okay, so in that graph, just those two things. Now, if you want to learn about how the T0 position affects the phase graph, I recommend that you do that over here in the impulse display. So where is zero right now? So I haven't adjusted it. So zero, the reference is here. What does that mean? If this is zero, then everything that arrived before this line is early and everything after this line is late. And again, it, that really only is going to affect how our phase graph displays. But that's important for being able to read the phase graph and compare things. So wouldn't it be better if we shifted that zero position to somewhere that's actually in our measurement so that we can make some uh, effective decisions. And this is part of the, I guess, the topic of getting actionable data is making this adjustment. So let's go to T offset zero. And we could look at where this ref is. RumiQ Wizard has decided that the peak, it's telling us that the peak is 2.34 milliseconds. Now on my tests, RumiQ Wizard is really good about placing this automatically. The only time it gets confused is if you have a reflection that is higher than, uh, the, than the first arrival. If you have a late arrival that has a peak that's higher than your direct sound, then RumiQ Wizard may put this ref in the wrong place. But you can adjust this manually, um, but you might just want to check that occasionally to make sure that it's putting this ref in the right place. Anyway, it's telling us that the peak of this impulse response is at 2.34 milliseconds. So if we move this manually, the 2.34, then we get a much more readable phase graph here. And so if I were to remove this and hit estimate IR delay, then it's going to not only give me the opportunity to move that zero position automatically, but also update it for all of my future measurements. So if I shift and update timing reference, then take another measurement, it has put that offset, it's built it into the next one so that I won't need to do this again. Okay, so now if we look at T offset zero, look, it's done that same thing. And so we make this go away. So now, our zero times zero is moved to here. And I'm just looking at the numbers here. I see negative numbers over here, positive numbers over here. And there we go. It lined up pretty well. So this is our new T zero position. So I'll get rid of this. 
Everything that arrived before is early. Everything after the line is late. And now if we look at the phase graph here, we can see some connections. So see where the phase trace starts to flatten out here. That is this T0 position. Okay. And then everything that is sloping up and behind here, this is late, this is late, and then sloping up from this reference position is early. So all this late stuff is the stuff that's coming behind the line here, and this early stuff is the stuff that's coming from before the line here. Okay, what if we make some slight adjustments here? So moving this T0 line a tiny bit. Okay, and now everything's moved a little bit. So now T0 is in this region, centered around six or seven kilohertz. Now this is late. Now this is early. So just training myself to recognize these patterns so I can look at this stuff quickly. And now let's make a big change. So I'll add one millisecond here. And I will apply and close so that I can draw this line again. So now where's T0? So um, I'm seeing negative numbers, negative numbers. And then here's that zero position. So now most of the measurement is actually in front of this T0. And there's a little bit of it afterwards. And now it makes more sense when we look at that phase graph here um, that this part is the flat part now. Now most of the measurement is arriving early, right? Because our zero position is here and most of the measurement is arriving before that T0 position. So estimate IR delay and this offset T0 control where this zero time reference position is so that the phase graph can, and, I, and the impulse response graph, can tell us that relatively things are arriving early or late. Okay, so in our day-to-day -day work, what we typically do is we move the microphone to the position that we want, and then we're, you know, doing an alignment between two speakers. So we take the first measurement, we hit estimate IR delay, shift and update timing reference, and then we take our next measurement and we never change that estimate IR delay. Again, we never change that T0 position until we are doing something different. So typically we move the microphone and now we have a new position, we're doing a new job. So we take that measurement again, estimate IR delay, and then leave it alone for the further measurements. So I hope this helps. Um, let me know what questions come up for you. Thanks.